Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video on alkene reactions, we're going to be talking about halohydrin formation. Here we have a halohydrin formation reaction. And the way that we know that this is halohydrin formation is because we're reacting a double bond or an alkene with Br2. And remember, we could also use Cl2, for example. The important thing for you guys to hone in on, however, is the solvent. So as you can see, the solvent here is water, and water is a protic solvent. And it's important because for halohydrin formation, you're always going to be using a protic solvent. That might be water, or it could also be an alcohol, such as methanol or ethanol. If you're using an aprotic solvent instead, such as CCl4 or CH2Cl2, you're doing an entirely different reaction known as halogenation. So if you haven't checked out my video on halogenation, go ahead and check out that video before you watch this one, because the two mechanisms are very similar to each other, except at the very end. So understanding halogenation well will help you understand this reaction. So now that we know we're using a protic solvent, we can go ahead and proceed with this reaction. Again, remember water is an example of a protic solvent. So the first step here is the double bond is going to attack one of the bromines. And then the electrons between the two bromine atoms are gonna go to the second bromine. So now we're ready to add our bromine to one of the carbons of where the double bond used to be. And you want to put your bromine on the less substituted carbon, which in this case is going to be this carbon right here. So the way that I know this carbon is less substituted is because there are more hydrogens on that carbon. So I'm going to go ahead and put my bromine on a wedge. Now you don't have to put the bromine on a wedge, you could also put it on a dash. The reason that it doesn't matter in the first step if you put the bromine on a wedge or a dash is because the double bond is trigonal planar. That's the geometry, meaning the double bond is flat like a piece of paper. And 50% of the time, the bromine can add on the top face on a wedge, and 50% of the time it can add on a dash. So you can choose whichever way you want to put the bromine in the beginning, and I normally just choose the wedge. So unlike hydrogen, bromine actually has these lone pairs around it. So as opposed to us forming a carbocation on this carbon that is now deficient, remember this carbon used to have a double bond and it doesn't anymore. So you might be thinking, okay, now we've got a carbocation. But in reality, we do not have a carbocation there. The bromine is going to donate a little bit of its electron density to that carbon. So instead of having a full-blown carbocation, we're going to have a partial positive sign instead. And so why is that significant? It's because the partial positive sign, just like I mentioned for halogenation, here it is again, it's not able to rearrange. So remember, only carbocations are going to be doing those methyl shifts and hydride shifts. So you're not going to see a rearrangement here with that partial positive sign. So now that we have the intermediate set up, you might be thinking, okay, now the second bromine is going to come in and attack just like it did for halogenation. However, that's not the case. So I want you guys to think why. Why, why are we not having that bromine attack? So remember, we've got the bromine that left, and he's got a full negative sign. So we added on one of the bromines. Here he is. And then we've got the second bromine, and he's just kind of chilling there with his negative charge. And remember, Br- is a very strong nucleophile, so it would make sense that he would attack the partial positive sign. However, instead, what's actually going to happen here is the water is going to attack. So here is our water molecule, and it's got two lone pairs on the oxygen. And so the water is going to go in and attack the partial positive carbon. And then bromine is going to take his electrons back. And we want to think, where is the water going to add? Is it going to add on a wedge or on a dash? And so remember, the first bromine added on a wedge. And that means that that front face is very crowded. 
So the water molecule, when it attacks, it's going to have to attack on the back face. So it's going to come in on a dash. And the reason the water comes in from the back is just to avoid the crowded front face. So now that the water has attacked, it, the oxygen atom is going to acquire a positive formal charge. So make sure you put the positive formal charge on your oxygen, and I'll get back to him in just a second. I want to comment on one thing. Why does the water attack as opposed to the bromine? That's a very good question. You might be thinking, I know water is a weak nucleophile, and Br- is a strong nucleophile. So wouldn't it make more sense for the Br- to attack? Well, as you can imagine, if you were to have a beaker, and in the beaker you have this solution, and you've got all of this water, right? So the water is filling the beaker. And then you're going to put a little bit of your Br2 inside of the beaker, a little bit of the alkene, and they're going to react within the water solvent. The reason the water preferentially attacks instead of the Br- even though the Br- is a stronger nucleophile, has to do with the fact that there's just way more water molecules around. So it's not that the water is a stronger nucleophile, it's not, it's weaker, but it's just probability alone. By having all of these water molecules around, that's the reason the water attacks instead of the bromine. And this is going to be the case of any protic solvent that you use. So I told you guys in the beginning that you could also have methanol here instead. If methanol were to have attacked, you would have added the methanol molecule on. And instead of having this H here, you would have had a CH3 for methanol. So just play, you want to pay close attention to whatever solvent you're using, okay? And if it's a protic solvent, remember it's the solvent that's going to attack as opposed to the second bromine. So now we can't just leave our water molecule with the positive sign, the water that just attacked. So we're going to have to do a neutralization step. So a second water molecule is going to come in, and you might be like, well, where did that water come from? Remember, there's so many water molecules in this beaker, so it's just a second water molecule. And his oxygen lone pair is going to grab one of these hydrogens, and then the electrons will go back to the oxygen. And so that's going to allow us to get our product, where we are going to have the neutral OH group, and then we're going to have our bromine. And so one thing you want to pay attention to again is that I mentioned this in the last video on halogenation, but because we have this cyclic intermediate, you guys see how this intermediate is kind of triangular? That, re that is the reason that we're going to have anti-stereochemistry for our product. So do you see how the bromine here is on a wedge? and the OH is on a dash, those are opposite each other, right? That's known as anti. And anytime you have a cyclic intermediate, you're going to end up with anti-stereochemistry. So because of our cyclic intermediate, we have the anti-stereochemistry. Now there was really no reason that the first bromine added on a wedge. It could have added on a dash instead. And if the first bromine had added on a dash, that would have meant that the back face would have been crowded. So the OH group would have ended up on the front face. It would have added on as a water molecule, which would have been deprotonated and neutralized to look like this guy. So these are our two products. And you'll note that both of them have anti-stereochemistry. So I mentioned this also in the halogenation video, a lot of the times the intermediate is going to be shown differently. Instead of showing it with the partial positive, it will be shown as a brominium ion. So you want to be familiar with this way of showing the intermediate. It's going to look like this with a big positive on the bromine. So don't let this confuse you. This is just another way of showing the intermediate. So here we have the intermediate. And this is just another way that you can show the intermediate, and it's called a brominium ion. And I want you guys to be familiar with that just in case it shows up on your exam.